Happy Monday, guys. Now, these new APUs from AMD is generally something that I wouldn't get too excited about. They're launching next month. But having said that, these things actually support Fidelity FX super resolution from AMD, which is actually quite impressive considering. So that caught my attention. Let's have a deeper look and see what these CPUs can offer. Before we do that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that at the end of the video and hit that like button. Let's do this. Now, the three models that we are going to be looking at today is the 5750G, the 5650G, and the 5350G. Quite a mouthful, I know. These are all based on Zen 3, which is AMD's latest architecture, so expecting great CPU performance out of these bad boys. These three are the latest ones that got added into the lineup. So there's multiple different variants of this. For example, you get the 5600G and the 5700G, but these are obviously new updated versions of it, so I'm going to focus on these three for now. There will be more launching, but let's just look at these three for now. Something worth mentioning is that you also do get the Pro variants, although we're not interested in that. We're more looking at the APU's desktop versions. And just so that you guys know, this was announced in Computex 2021, so it's already been announced. We're literally just waiting for it to launch, which is quite cool. Now, these things are going to be an absolute beast. I mean, look at this one. The Ryzen 7 um, 5750G is going to have 8 cores, 16 threads, clock speeds of 3.8 to 4.6, boost to 4.6, which is insane. And then it only has a TDP of 65 watt. That is a lot of horsepower at 65 watt. And it still comes with the Vega integrated graphics, which is also the reason why anyone would want to buy this because it actually offers you some graphics as well. And in this current market, like I said, there's GPU shortages. This is not a bad midway point or even for a little PC that, you know, you don't have a graphics card for or you never plan on adding a graphics card, but still want to run some, maybe some gaming on it or do some video encoding or have, just have it running with some graphic um, capabilities. This is a great option. They say here that the CPU should retail around $350 to $400, which is very well priced for an 8 core Zen 3 CPU that even offers some gaming performance. We'll get to more of the gaming performance just now. Before we do, let's just look at this big bash of, <laughs> of Intel once again. AMD seems to love doing, doing that to, to Intel. I almost feel sorry for Intel at this point. Anyway, so they're comparing the 5700G to the i7 11 700 okay or 11th gen 700 these code names are ridiculous anyway so in gaming oh if I, if I first um content creation let's first look at that so in content creation you can expect basically a better performance across the board on these cpus and then in gaming significant improvements that is almost like a, a double the performance more than double more than double, more than double the performance. This is in Warframe, Row Company, and in Fortnite. In Counter-Strike, you're getting a 50% increase there. But having said that, that is actually a significant jump in performance. So, <laughs> poor Intel, once again. They don't have anything that can compete at this stage with AMD's offering of both CPU and graphics card built into one. We're not talking about dedicated graphics cards here. We're talking about just... CPUs that have built-in graphics and AMD is by far the best option right now. So moving on to the second model available, the 56050G, that will be a 6-core 12-thread CPU, base clock of 3.9, boost of 4.4, which is still pretty impressive. 65 watt TDP again, which is incredible. What really gets me is that you can even get the trimmed down version or the slightly lower clocked version that can run at 35 watt. That is basically nothing. No wonder these chips are going to be dominating, first of all, low powered laptops. And I have a lot of use cases for a low powered CPU. 
in one of my previous videos, I even built a PlayStation 3 emulator using a uh, built-in graphics card and a CPU. I believe it was actually an Intel chip. It was the 8400T, which is the lower TDP chip from Intel with the built-in GPU, which wasn't even that powerful. But this is making me excited to try and rebuild that project and use one of these, maybe the 6-core or even the even the 4-core CPU, so the 53050G is still a beast at 4 cores and 8 threads. Um, base clock 4 gig, 4.2 boost, and uh, I believe yeah, you get the 35 watt variant of this as well, which will then just have slightly lower uh, clock speeds of 3.6 boost and 4.2 uh, boost and 3.6 base. Now into some gaming performance, which we are all actually interested in. So I see they've used this Zadek RAM, which I did some research the other day and they were one of the first companies that actually launched, and correct me if I'm wrong, but DDR5 high clock memory. I'm talking about like, I think it was 6,400 or something. It was a ridiculous high clock speed memory in DDR5. They were one of the first companies that did that. I've never heard of them. I've never seen them before. So that's quite new. Anyways, so the test system um, includes 16 gig of that RAM at 3600, which we know AMD is sensitive to high frequency memory. So important, if you do buy one of these, I suggest getting at least 3600 DDR4 memory for that. So we can see the times pi 3D Mark scores here. So what they've done is they've added in the 5800X, which is an amazing CPU, with a dedicated 560 graphics card 4 gig um, variant just to see how this would compare a cpu built-in graphics how does that compare to the built or not the bare built-in but the dedicated graphics card so here we can see the 5750g overclocked is coming close in cpu performance but not really that's quite a significant difference in cpu based performance but in GPU, it actually does pull ahead of a 560 um, 4 gig dedicated graphics card. Now that is impressive. Even on the, okay, that's the 570 not overclocked variant. Not a lot of improvement on the previous gen, I suppose, when it comes to even in CPU performance here for gaming, not really seeing a big difference. GPU performance between new and old gen, also not massive difference. The 560 year, same story down the line. So not really a massive significant in synthetic benchmarks at least. But we do see that the graphics is still pretty impressive. And again, right now it's all about availability. And it seems like these chips will be available. To get an 8-core Zen 3 CPU plus a graphics card that is equal to a 564 gig for $350 to $400 in my opinion is a great deal so as per usual we've got csgo performance i don't know why guys keep on <laughs> benchmarking counter-strike go as if it's the pinnacle of benchmarks but anyways so in csgo basically with any of these apus you can expect at, at 1080p 160 plus fps even from previous gen stuff so that's what i'm saying like it's, a, it's such a pointless benchmark actually but anyway in other words, you can actually game on this, I think especially for a little PC that is going to play CSGO and any other eSport games like maybe even Dota and League of Legends. And I wonder if this will even play Warzone. I'll double check and make sure about that. But probably it will run Warzone at low, medium settings, 1080p, maybe even medium settings. Who knows? These things are not are not uh, lacking any CPU power, so it might, as, it might run that quite well. But here comes the interesting part, okay? So according to these benchmarks and information that we've received, um, you don't really need a motherboard over the A50 or the B550. So again, this is aimed at entry-level systems. I think it will be pointless to go and spend any more on that for a motherboard that has features that you'll probably never end up using 
at the end of the day, what it comes down is pricing and availability. I believe availability will be okay. Pricing is not bad, I believe, if they can stick to these sort of numbers. So we'll be expecting these CPUs to launch at about $360 for the 8-core and about $260 for the 6-core. Following that trend, the 4-core will probably be $159 then. So for $159... To get a 4-core Zen 3 CPU, 8 threads, plus a GPU that comes relatively close to a 560, that is not bad in my opinion. I think that is absolutely incredible, even if it's half of the performance of a 564 gig. Uh, I believe that's a great deal and a great steal. So there you have it, guys. Low power APUs, lots of cores, high clock speeds, decent integrated graphics coming from AMD in August, launching around about the 5th of August. I'm excited for these chips. I think they open up gaming again <laughs> to the masses, especially for esports gaming. And even if you are in the middle of waiting for a graphics card or you want to start building up a system, you want to go AMD, but you don't have a graphics card in your build yet because you can't find one, whatever the case might be, this might be a good midway stop. You can play some esports and some light gaming while you then wait for a graphics card to become available. It's an easy upgrade path down the line. I think it's good. I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video. If you've liked it, remember to click that button. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe. Why not? You don't want to miss any of these future updates and videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.